research. Hey everybody, we are back and I've got us zoomed in a little bit here. We're going to do the rest of the XLS Encore crossover assembly. We've got the crossovers assembled and now we're going to put all the wiring on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire up just one of them and then I'm going to zoom in and let you see a little closer up wiring of the second one. So if you don't really get to see it this first go around, hang in there and maybe you'll see it on the second go around. I've got an XLS Encore box here. What I'm going to do is just set it next to it. Uh, this is the side of the box. This is the end that the tube connectors are on. This is the end that the drivers are in over here. So I want to position it somewhat in the middle, just like it's going to be in the floor of the cabinet. And I've measured out some wire here that's going to be the positive wire and I want it to be able to reach from here through the box and out the back of the tube connector hole and I can trim the excess off if I have some excess um, whenever I'm installing the tube connector. So what I want to do is I want to strip a little suction of this off and we're going to mount it right here on this wire. We're going to just squeeze it together and then just twist it together. That's the twisting of the two wires together is really the connection. We have two wires twisted. That that's it. It's not the solder. You don't you don't want to lay it next to it and then solder it so that the solder is the connection. You want to actually twist it. This is the other one that I made. Um, that's going to go on the other one whenever we wire it. Um, we usually wire it two at a time or cut them, cut them two at a time so that they're the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out what I need for the woofer. And the woofer is going to come right off of this one here. And it's got to reach out the front of the box to there. So I'm going to cut two of those. And I'm also usually making sure when I cut it that I lay it to where I know that I'm stripping the same end on both wires. I'm like that. I like using, running the wire in the same direction. So this is going to be the connection that is the positive for the woofer. So we're twisting that on. See, if we do this correctly, we're not having to use a bunch of wire to splice here and there and make little jumpers of wire to reach from one component to the other. We want to minimize all those connections. We don't want wires running all over the place. So the way to do it is to connect everything point to point and then we don't have a bunch of jumper wires going everywhere. The last one we're going to do is the tweeter. i can get the end of the wire here. And it's of course going to be at the top of the box so it's going to be a little bit longer. So if we set it in the floor of the box uh, this is where we're going to connect it to, coming right off of there. So it's going to come from there, going to go through the box, and then out through the tweeter hole. So we need about that much. And when I send these kits out, I send them out to where you've got a little bit of leeway as far as extra wire. So you're not having to worry that you're about to run out or you're not going to cut enough or you're not going to have enough wire because I've given you enough wire. And then we're going to mount it right here to the this spot. That's where the last cap and resistors come together. And twist it together. Uh, in this case, we've got some extra wire coming off of that MyFlex copper cap. That's the bypass cap. It has a pretty long lead going out that end of it there. So we've got some extra. And we don't have to use all of that extra wire. We can just cut that off. Now, we've got all of our positives on. So what we want to do is we want to solder uh, all of those connections. And then we're going to work on the negatives on everything. So um, again, we want to heat up our soldering iron. We always want to make sure the tip is clean. I'm uh, rubbing it with a little uh, wire brush. And I always just hold it over the little waste basket there and clean it, make sure it's good and good and clean. And then we want to heat up the wire that we're soldering to. Always want to make sure there's a little bit of solder on the tip so it'll transfer that heat. 
and then we just run down it and we want to cover all of that wire that was bare wire anything that was just bare copper that's sticking out or sticking up from our red coated wire there we want to we want to be sure we've tinned it we really don't want to leave any of it exposed to where it can oxidize anytime there's bare copper wire exposed we're just kind of asking for some oxidation to occur so again putting a little solder on it and getting it hot and then feeding it on there sometimes when you get it hot the the wire will lose its grip on what you've twisted it to it may come off that's okay just retwist it and and then you'll be okay and then after we've got all of that on what we'll do is we'll cover it in some heat shrink so we'll come back later and we'll slide red heat shrink down over all of these and we'll seal all the connections so we've got this one going to the input we've got this one going to the woofer and we've got this one going up to the tweeter so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to peel off our negative wires so first i'd say we're going to run woofer negative and the woofer negative is going to catch this capacitor right here that is the return leg and what we're going to do is we're just going to stop it right there and we're going to wind up twisting these two together so they're going to need to be the same length as that wire once we finish doing the twisting so i'll cut one for each leg one for each crossover i should say and we're going to strip this end and we're going to strip it and we're going to twist it right onto this capacitor and we're going to go back on it a little bit there we're not going to twist it all the way to the tip because we're still going to need some of this tip out here on the end of it because we're going to connect one more to it coming from the tweeter that's going to go all the way back to the negative um, tube connector in. So that's it for that connection. And I think you know what I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and solder that one on since we're going to be putting one more on it. I'm going to make it just a little bit tighter there at the end. That'll work. And let's get this one on. Again, we always want to make sure the tip is hot. We want to feed a little solder onto it so that it will transfer the heat. And I like to sometimes on this one just put it underneath it and just run right down it and solder that real well. Okay, so the next one is the one that gets a little more tricky. And this is towards the woofer right here. What we're going to do on this is we want to start at the end of this positive for the tweeter and we're going to run down this thing and we're going to know it needs to go from there and we're going to connect it over here to this resistor and inductor part here and then we're going to catch this one that we just soldered to and then it's going to come over here to this red one and it needs to be the length of that one. So. That one wire gets a little longer, and what we're going to do is we're going to put a few little splices in it along the way. And I'll show you how we do that. And the trick here is we are not cutting the wire. We're not breaking this wire up into a bunch of different pieces. We're going to use the other one to measure by. And right there, we're going to put a splice. So what we're going to do is just cut it and then move over a little bit and cut it again and then we're going to slice a little piece out of it so just take your little exacto knife your box cutting knife I like to do two cuts across it and that's usually enough to peel it off of there so now we have a little piece that the insulation has been cut out of if everybody can see it there We'll get a closer up on the next one, I promise. And so we're going to twist it on right there. And 
also before we move on down the line and twist it on to the next connection we got to do one more thing that we haven't done yet because we when we're done with this we put heat shrink on all of it and we seal all the connections well in this case we can't put heat shrink on it if we continue on its path and we connect it to the next connection point and keep going you can't get the heat shrink on it so after I solder this one I'm gonna have to cut a little piece of heat shrink and slide it on there we don't have to heat it and put it on yet we don't have to seal it but we have to get it on there now or we won't be able to get it on there at all so that's that connection I'm gonna grab a piece of white heat shrink that I'm gonna cut off and I send heat shrink out with the kit so you guys have these I'm gonna slide this down over it and we're gonna seal that connection here in a little bit so in the next one we have to splice is right here at this capacitor that was the return leg on the woofer I'm going to cut a little piece out of it just like we did the other one and that's going to be our last connection just cut a little bit out I usually like to spin it around a little bit slice a little more out of it and usually if you do two cuts it's just enough you also want to make sure when you when you do this that you don't cut too deep with your stripper you don't want to use the wrong hole and cut down too deep because if you if you nick the copper if you put a little bit of a gash in it there when you go to, to bend it it'll just snap in half so you don't want to do that this is 16 gauge solid core wire it's it's high purity copper it's four nines pure copper and this is in polyethylene a polyethylene jacket so it is a very high quality very high end wire it's very good at signal transfer it sounds really really good we've a beat it against a lot of different wires and i like it i like it a lot okay so we've got another connection point there and this will be our last solder connection and then we'll slide heat shrink down on everything and this one will be complete so all you guys are always worried about how hard this is to put together you can watch the video and see that it's really not that hard I'm sure I wired all of this up in less than 10 minutes maybe we'll see when the video is complete I guess and that's it. That's the last soldered connection. Tidy this connection. Ooh, a little warm. Tidy this up just a little because we're going to slide heat shrink over it. There's all our wiring. All done. Um, I'm going to set this one over here. And I'm going to pause it. We're going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to do the second one to where you can see it a little closer. All right, here we are back on the second one. Like I said, I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit so you guys can really see it a little bit better. And we're going to do wiring assembly on the second crossover. So what we got here is the input wire. And I'm just going to twist that on there. Just like I did on the other crossover. Hopefully you guys can see it a little bit better. Hopefully my hand won't cause the camera to shoot in and out of focus. This one is the one that we use for the woofer. We cut the links, of course, a few minutes ago when we did the first one. It's always easier to do the first one and cut everything as you go and then cut the second wiring as you're doing it. Now we don't have to worry about cutting wire links. We've already got that done. Now we just got to put them where they go. Twist them on. And a piece of cake. I like to use a couple little pairs of needle nose pliers. 
makes it pretty easy. This longer one is the one that's got to go all the way up to the top of the box to the tweeter. So that one's going to go on right here. Hopefully you guys can see it okay. This one, like the other one, has got a little extra wire sticking up there that was part of the long length of wire that was on the MyFlex bypass cap. And we just twisted that on there a little high. There's a little excess there. We're just going to snip it off. That's it for our positive wires. Get all of our positives done. Now I'm going to solder them on. We'll make sure my soldering tip is clean. I'm going to let it heat up for just a little bit and then feed a little solder onto it because that's going to help transfer the heat. And then we're going to go right up that wire and just solder it right on there. And I usually like to make sure that it covers all the copper that's on the wire that we're soldering to. And with this iron, I can use either side of it. So sometimes I use the bottom side, sometimes I use the top side. And this solder flows really well and pretty well under heat. I like to use a lot of heat. I like to get on it and get off of it. I don't like to hold anything on for very long. So we've got a little piece sticking out here. Squeeze that one down. That's it for all of our positives. Uh, next it was the negative, and this negative is the, the negative for the woofer. And it's going in that same direction there, so we're going to strip off the end. And again, we're going to be making one other connection at this same point. So as you can see, I'm not going all the way to the end. I'm going to start a little higher up and twist those two together. And with these, sometimes you can get it by hand and get it twisted on pretty, pretty well. And then just finish it off with the, with the little needle nose pliers there. Right, twisting the wrong way. There we go. All right, it's a good connection. And I'm gonna go ahead on that one and solder it on. And then we've got the one last piece to put on. And we'll have all of our wiring done. This one we're gonna we're gonna start at the tip of the wire that's the tweeter wire. I'm going to run it down the length of it and measure it off to where we're going to connect it to that next connection point. And again, we're just putting a little nick in it and maybe moving oh half inch, three quarters of an inch away from it just a little bit. You can see we put a little notch on each side. And then I'm just going to take a little X-Acto knife and just shave that thing off of there. Spin it around just a little bit. Get another little bit off and then pluck it right off of there. All right. And this one is going to go on it right there. That's the actual return leg of the tweeter circuit itself. Twisted on there. All right. Then we're going to solder that one on. And just like we did on the last one, we're going to have to put that piece of heat shrink on it before we solder it to the next connection point, or we won't be able to get the heat shrink on. This one's taking a little more heat. 
because of the two things that are connected there. There we go. That solder to flow really well and we're all over it. Straighten it up a little bit. Make sure it's nice and straight because we're going to slide this heat shrink down on it and slide it off. Oh, here's another trick too, I'll tell you. On this heat shrink, sometimes when you have to put it over something pretty large, if you stretch it out a little bit on one end, sometimes that'll make it a little easier to fit around and over everything. So there we are all the way to the end there. And now, last connection point. I'm going to do this one more time. Just kind of mark where you're going to strip it. Make sure you're in the right hole. Like I said, you always want to make sure you don't use the next one over, which is going to cut it in half almost. And then we're going to strip that little piece out. And spin it around just a little bit. Cut out the next section. There we go. Good old polyethylene. All right, and then one last connection. Hold on to it nice and tight. Give it a good twist. Remember the connection is that it's twisted together. You want good surface contact of the wires when you twist them together. And that is a good looking joint there. And then we'll have heat shrink that will slide over on it. This is our last connection. Again, we just want to make sure that the soldering iron is good and hot. Remember, keep this away from you. This that's coming off of it is the flux that's melting and you don't want to stick your face over it and breathe it. If it is just going straight ahead or straight above you, you're out of the path. You're in good shape. If you feel a little insecure, you can wear a mask, but it's not a problem. That's it. We've wired two crossovers. Next I'm going to cut heat shrink. I'm going to slide it down on all of it and seal everything up and we'll be done with this one. All right, final step here on the crossovers. We're going to slide some heat shrink down over everything so that we can seal all these connections off. Now anytime you make a soldered connection where you have uh, high purity copper wire twisted onto something, making a connection, you don't want to leave that wire exposed to the air because eventually that wire will oxidize and you don't want that wire oxidized. So what we want to do is we want to slide some heat shrink down over it and seal all that up. And of course the heat shrink comes in the kit. So all you have to do is cut it into the appropriate lengths. We'll also put some heat shrink on the tube connectors and on the drivers because those are the other places where everything connects. Sliding that over and then um, just a heat gun. Um, some guys use a little lighter. You can wave a lighter underneath it. Do the same thing. Um, might even get away with a, a hair dryer if it gets really hot. Uh, I use the low setting and we just go over everything and seal it. Also when you're doing this try not to aim this right at the capacitors. You don't want to start melting capacitors it is putting off some heat you can put a little heat on the capacitors and towards it but you really don't want to uh, put it right on them you want to keep this thing moving you want to move from one side to the other get heat on both sides and that'll give it a good shrink I'm doing this stuff i always think who's going to watch this this is boring. We're just watching me work. This is stuff that I do all the time. But apparently, you guys seem to appreciate it. You get to go kind of step by step through the whole thing. And if it's helpful for you guys, then I'm glad to do it. I've had a lot of requests for this particular one. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna not bore you with doing both of them. These are here's the next step here. These are the two input wires. So what we're going to do is we want to take these and twist them. 
and this is going to actually help in RFI and EMI rejection which means radio frequency interference and electromagnetic interference anytime you take these wires and you twist them like this you are changing its capacitance and inductance a little bit you're causing it to be a little bit of a filter rather than an antenna because if you wire these things out in there what you're doing is you're creating a little antenna in your box and you don't want to do that so you just take the wires and twist them and then that also makes them a little easier to work with once you're connecting it to the drivers once you're connecting it to the tube connectors everything is somewhat intuitive now we've got wire for your tweeter wire for your woofer wire for the two connectors so there you have it a completed crossover all done all you guys have to do is play this back over and over watch closely and replicate what i just did it's the same for the base level model in the base level model you're going to have you're going to have the rc poly caps uh, you're going to have maybe a sonic cap gen 2 bypass cap in a couple of spots and you'll have the link resistors uh, it's high quality parts that are designed for meeting a budget price point. This version is the version with all the upgrades and again I took it a little step further and added the MyFlex copper bypass caps as well. So there you have it. That's it for assembly of the crossover. Next we're going to mount it in the cabinets and do complete um, assembly of the drivers and button this thing up. So hang in there. More to come.